is not. What's the first most noticeable difference that we talked about with Larry that's different about Cortez? I heard it. His tail. Do you think this is a ground-dwelling bird? No. What is going to happen if he wanders around on the ground? It's going to get completely mucked up. He uses that tail to fly and glide from tree to tree with all of his flock mates, and so it's really important that that's in beautiful shape. Now, he's very brightly colored. Um, all of him is brightly colored, and you think, well, how is that a survival mechanism? But stop and think for a second. You look up into the trees, they look green right now, but if it's sunny, the light hits them. The leaves look yellow, the leaves look green. You can see all kinds of different colors. You see blue skies. Um, all of these colors would blend in, and there's also fruit and different things in the trees that these guys can actually blend in with. So, one of the reasons, remember earlier we talked about mimicry, why the birds need to talk. Well, they don't talk. They talk here because that's what they hear. They're repeating the words that we say. In the jungle, they would actually talk and repeat other sounds. So, what would you sound like in the rainforest? Yeah, that's what they sound like in the rainforest. And in your living room. And they live for 80 years. Remember that. They're a social species that wants to communicate. That's what they do. So we encourage them to communicate like they would in their niche in a flock in the trees in ways that are appropriate. So I say, can you say hello? Hello. Thank you. We reward that instead of screaming. Um, but one of the ways, think about that mimicry could be important. So, you're about to eat your grilled cheese sandwich at lunch. You're putting it up to your mouth, and your cheese sandwich says, Hello? Hello? Are you going to eat that sandwich? Maybe if you're really hungry, but you're still going to stop and look at it and think, What did I just do here? Now, that kind of startle mechanism might work in their favor. So think about it. You're sneaking up on a parent, thinking you're going to have a little chunk of mini turkey or something like that, and all of a sudden it sounds like a billy goat. Yes! You're probably going to stop. And really, all that takes is that one little two seconds, and the bird can fly away and get away to safety. It may not always work, but if you can sound bigger or more ferocious, you might startle something into not eating you for a moment. And Cortez is good at sounding like things that are not parrots. We already heard that one. Can you do your turkey? Oh, that was a good turkey. He loves the pettings, and that's why he knows Billy goes. We live, live next door to the lions and tigers. Can you do your kitty? Oh, that's a good kitty. That's a very good kitty. He's never seen one, but we tell him all the time. He hears on the radio. Can you do your dog? Ugh, that was a dog, sort of. Is your dog sick? Does your dog have a cold? Yes, he does have a cold. Oh, my goodness. These are all sound like sounds he's picked up from us and things that he shows that we tried to get on cue. But it also does, though, in a niche, what would happen if a predator or a lion or tiger or a jaguar down in South America actually came up there? Yeah, uh-oh, that would be problems, wouldn't it? And he knows what would actually happen if it got too close. What would happen if the jaguar got too close? Oh, no! about jaguars or snakes eating them or anything because he works here with us at the Law of Life Theater. This is his niche now and this is what he does. He's about 20 years old. He has done this all of his life and he is a champ. He loves this. You'll see Cortez on TV, all over the zoo. He's been in the newspaper. This is what he's really good at. This is what he specialized at and this is his niche. So we're going to ask somebody to come and go and get him before we bring on our last animal. Can you tell him you got to go? Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.